His name is hallowed in the firmament. He's the Passover lamb through space and time. Say our God is indescribable. Says his name is indescribable. Worship him because he's God. Say, Father, I give you glory. I declare your majesty. I declare your awesomeness. Hallelujah.
faithfulness over our lives. We give him all the praise for the privilege to be hearing from him directly. We pray that the Almighty God will speak to us in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, we thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness over our lives. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for this season. Thank you, Lord, for what we are about to hear from you. We give you all the praise. Father, we say, be thou glorified in the name of Jesus. Lord, it says in your word that the entrance of your word giveth light and it giveth understanding to the simple. Lord, we ask, King of glory, that you bless us via your word in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Praise the Lord. The topic before us is titled Esther. Case study in verses unto honor. Esther, case study in verses unto honor. At a time like this, we need to be verses unto honor. And so we'll be using this time to look at what it means to be a vessel unto honor and how we can keep being vessel unto honor until the glorious day of the Lord. Let's open our Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. I'll read from here. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Let me read NIV. NIV says the same 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. In a large house... There are articles not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some are for special purposes and so for common use. The topic once again is Esther, case study in verses unto honor. We'll be extrailing the life of Esther, how she moved from being an orphan, a slave girl, to become vessels unto honor for God, and in same process saved entire nation. It is my pr pr prayers that your nations, your generations, will live to testify of God's deposit upon your life 
in the name of Jesus. What is a vessel? A vessel is a hollow container, especially one that we use to hold either liquid or solid or a gas. For example, a ship may be a vessel, a drum may be a vessel. So typically we say that a vessel must have a length, a breadth, and a width, and must be able to hold some content. And don't forget, as human beings, we have our spirit, we have our soul, and we have our body. So what is honor? Honor simply means to have great respect or great esteem, or the quality of knowing and doing what is morally right. As Christians, the questions, are we vessel unto honor or vessel unto dishonor? When we put the two words together, a vessel unto honor is a man or a woman with great esteem. To be a vessel unto honor is a costly endeavor, but it's one that is worthwhile. So are you a vessel unto honor or a vessel unto dishonor? Are you highly esteemed by God or you are lightly esteemed? The Bible says that in a great house, there are vessels unto honor and there are vessels unto dishonor. So let's look at the life of Esther. Esther was a slave that became a king. And of course, you cannot have a queen without a king. And the splendor of a queen determines the strength of the king, determines the authority of the king. In the book of Esther chapter 1, Ahasuerus was a king over 127 provinces. He was a king of the world power then. He was a man that is, fear, that is very great. He was very great in every ramification. He was full of splendor. He was full of earthly splendor. So just as Esther was to as Ahasuerus, so also we are before God. Esther was able to please the king. So what are the things that we need to do to please the king of kings? As Esther was to King Ahasuerus, so also we Christians, we should be to Christ Jesus. Esther obtained favor before the king. As Christians, we must live our life so that every day we should constantly obtain favor before God. We are talking about the King of Kings. We are talking about the Lord of Lords. If Esther could obtain favor before a mortal king, how much more the King of Kings? In the book of Psalm 24, verse 1, Psalm 24, verse 1, the Bible says, the earth is of the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. The one that we must be versus unto honor is the one that has the entire world in his palm. The Bible says the earth is of the Lord. Imagine when you are a vessel unto honor to the one whose earth and evil is in his palm. In the book of Psalm 19 verse 1 to 3 Psalm 19 verse 1 to 3 the Bible says the heavens declare the glory of the Lord and the former men showed forth his handiwork verse 2 says day unto the uttereth speech and night unto night showed knowledge there is no speech or language where their voice is not heard talking about the almighty God so we are not talking about King Ahasuerus this time we are talking about the almighty God. How can we be vessels unto honor to the king of kings? And after being vessels unto honor, how can we retain that status of being a vessel unto honor to the end? Agai chapter 2 verse 8, the Bible says, the silver is mine, the gold is mine, seeth the Lord of hosts. And that is the God that wants us to be vessels unto honor, even unto him. 
His name is Jesus Christ. The level of a man's honor is largely determined by his benefactor. If a governor honors you, it's different from the weight of the honor coming from the president. In our Bible passage, we talked about a man that had powers, authorities, over 127 provinces, or what you call 127 nations, and a virgin, a young woman, Esther, found favor, and she became versus unto honor. But here we are talking about the king of kings becoming a vessel unto him, and not just for common use, but for special use. There are certain commodities you don't necessarily advertise because of the value upon them. You hardly see adverts where they are advertising Ferrari, but people still buy Ferrari because of the premium upon their life. And these are earthly things. How much more the premium upon your life when you are a vessel unto honor? When God can say, this is my son, this is my daughter, in whom I am well pleased. So how can we be vessels unto honor? How can we be used by God? How can we be God's favorites? The Bible says, Israel, have I loved? How can we live a life that God will so love? How can we please him? How can we be vessels that God will use? Not just vessels that, that, is, that is like trash, but vessels unto honor, not vessels unto dishonor. You have a part to play so that you will not end up like Vashti that was substituted for Esther. It is my prayer that God will not eliminate you God will not substitute you. You will not be replaced by God in the name of Jesus. But you have your part to play. Just as Esther played her own part. What should I do? Watch and pray. Don't be like Vashti. Vashti was rude. Vashti forgot that she was a queen. Because there was a king. As Christians, you cannot do anything outside Christ. You are a Christian because Christ has ransomed you. But even as Christ has ransomed you, the Bible says that you must work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So we must realize that all gifts are from God. And they are to be used for him. You want to be a vessel unto honor? You must realize that the deposit of God upon your life is to be used for his praise. God created you for his praise. God created you for you to show forth his praise. In every manner of your conversation, God must be praised. You want to be a vessel unto honor, you must learn from this moment that every gift that God has deposited in you must be used for his glory and his glory alone. James chapter 1 verse 17. James chapter 1 verse 17. The Bible says every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Not from abroad, but from above. And comment from the Father of light. With him, there is no variableness and there is no shadow of turning. You must learn to use your gifts. But before you start using your gifts from God, your ways must be aligned with him. Don't forget that Esther was a virgin. And what does that mean? Esther was pure. Esther was not defied. The Bible says, Because thou art love righteousness, and hated iniquity, even the Lord thy God has anointed thee with all your gladness above thy fellow. Esther was first and foremost a virgin before she became a queen. 
She was first and foremost pure before she became a vessel unto honor. So you must be pure first and foremost. You must use your gift for God. Now, for the, for the youth, now that you are young, you must use your strength. You must use your energy to the glory of God. Your passion, your commitment, your zeal, your drive, your passion must be towards pleasing him who have called you to be a vessel unto honor. In a great house, in the house of the Lord, there are vessels of gold and there are vessels of clay. Why gold will keep on shining, clay will burn out in no time. So the question we must ask ourselves this time, am I a vessel unto honor or a vessel unto dishonor? John chapter 3 verse 27. John chapter 3 verse 27 the Bible says, John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it's been given from the Lord. So God has given you the grace and the ability to live holy, to be a vessel unto honor. As long as you are born again, as long as you are determined to follow Christ to the end, as long as you have given your life to Jesus Christ, he has given you that ability to be a vessel unto honor. And I pray that will not disappoint him in the name of Jesus. So you must be dedicated for God's work so that you can be vessels unto honor. You must use your gift from God. And also you must have time for God. You must always have time for God because Honor must be given to whom, unto whom honor is due. So God is calling you for a relationship. The closer you are to God, the more you become honorable in his hands. And when you are a vessel unto honor, you become God's favorite. Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. And Jacob ended up becoming a vessel unto honor. And Esau became a profane vessel. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. So let us honor God in our daily lives. Let us honor God in our conversation. Let us give God due honor. Let us have fellowship with him. Luke chapter 14 verse 11 Luke chapter 14, verse 11. The Bible says, For whosoever exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. You want to be a vessel unto honor? You must have relationship with God, and you must stay humble. Because God is the author and the finisher of our faith. God is like the potter. We are like the clay. And when you are readily available, when you have a fellowship, a cordial relationship with Jesus Christ, it will mold you to the shape he wants you to be molded into. And that is the vessel unto honor we are talking about. So whatsoever position you are, you can make up your mind from this day and say, I want to be a vessel unto honor. I don't want to be a common vessel anymore. I don't want to be a vessel that will just be containing trash, that anybody can just dump anything on me. I want to be specially made. I want to be fearfully made by God. I want to be used by God. Like I said earlier on, the vessel is to contain that it's liquid or solid or gas. It's to contain something. A vessel like basket can be very useful when you take it to the farm. But when you want to use it to fetch water, it is no longer useful. So as Christians, it's not just to be only vessel, but you must be vessel unto honor, on time and in full, every time serving the Lord. And as Christians, you must be knitted. You want to remain vessels unto honor, you must be knitted, you must be glued to the 
to the 23. You must be glued to Jesus Christ. John chapter 15, verse 2. John chapter 15, verse 2. The Bible says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, it taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, it purgeth, that it may bring more fruit. You want to bear more fruit in every area of your life. You must be connected to the tree. No matter how splendid, no matter how nourished a tree is, or a branch is, when a branch is cut off from the tree, the best that it can do is to be used as a firewood and be consumed. So as Christians, you must have that consciousness to always abide in Christ. How is your study life? How are you living your life to please God? How connected are you to the source? How connected are you to the tree of life? How connected are you to the giver of life himself? You want to be a vessel unto honor like Esther? Or a vessel unto honor like Paul? Or a vessel unto honor like Philip? The first man to preach in the whole of Africa and brought evangelism and brought Christ to Africa? You want to be like David that even God said, that is the eyeball of my, my eye. So you want to be a vessel unto honor. So that on the last day, our master will say, welcome, faithful servant. You want to be a vessel unto honor, then you must abide. And the grace and the power for we to abide to the end, the Lord will give unto us in the name of Jesus. So as you make up your mind to be a vessel unto honor, the devil is also making up his mind to frustrate you. We go through challenges of life every day. But Jesus said, be of good share, for I have overcome the world. So the enemy is constantly looking for an opportunity to strike and displace a vessel unto honor. The devil does not want you to be vessel unto honor. It may not really tempt you when you are a vessel unto dishonor because you know you are at least you are, you are being useful to him. But it disdain anyone that is a vessel unto honor. And like a roaring lion is looking for who he will devour. So what do I do so that I can be a vessel unto honor. Second Timothy chapter four verse five. Second Timothy chapter four verse five. The Bible says, "But watch thou in all things, and your afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry." You want to be a vessel unto honor. And continue to be a vessel unto honor, you must watch all things. But watch thou in all things and your afflictions. Knowing fully well that on the last day we will receive the crown of life. So you must learn to despise the shame, you must learn to endure the cross, you must lay ev aside every besetting sin. All sins that do so easily beset, beset you, you must lay them aside. And you must look unto Jesus as the author and the finisher of your faith. So watch and pray. Do not allow the saving grace of God to sleep over your life. And this you must do, you must do daily so that you can remain unto vessel, unto honor. The harvest. It's many. Jesus himself said, the laborers are few. Do you want to be that few vessel unto honor that God is looking this end time? It's not all about your title. It's not all about your eloquence. It's not all about your charisma. But your availability 
to be vessel unto honor. We'll be coming to a close with this story of the young man in the book of Luke chapter 15, 11 to 32. It's a story of the prodigal son. How a vessel unto honor became a vessel unto dishonor and the mercy of God reached out to him and he became again a vessel unto honor. So no matter how stained, how dented your life may be, it is never too late to be a vessel unto honor. Luke chapter 15, verse 16. The Bible says, And it would fain have filled his belly with the ox that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Because at that time, it was a vessel unto dishonor. This was a young man that was too anxious. He met his father and said, Father, give me the portion of my inheritance. I want to go my way. A young man, he wanted to flex the old world. And he took his inheritance and he went to a far country. And he went out of the presence of the Lord. He started living a life that is not worthy of a vessel unto honor. And before he knew, he started living with the pigs, with the swine. He became a vessel unto dishonor. A man from rich home, a man that was filled with grace and God's provision, ended up eating from the same place that the pigs were eating from, from the plate of the father. He has taken his own destiny in his hands. When I hear people say that I, I am what I am because I have worked hard, I, 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 all what I've accomplished has been my power, I laugh at them. But this man came to himself and he returned and the father received him. No matter how dishonoring your life may be before God. The Bible says that God is of a pure eyes. He cannot behold iniquity. So when you stand before God face to face, ask yourself this question, am I a vessel unto honor or a vessel unto dishonor. A liar cannot be a vessel unto honor. A fornicator cannot be a vessel unto honor. A thief, a cheat, a gossip cannot be a vessel unto honor. Are you a vessel unto honor? Can God say, this is my son in whom I am well pleased? Like Job, can God call you his own? God was so proud of Job. It was even God that called the attention of Satan. Have you considered my servant Job in Job chapter 1? He was that faithful. He was vessel unto honor. And no wonder the Bible says, and the end of Job was better, was greater than the beginning. You want your tomorrow to be better than your yesterday. Then you must be a vessel unto honor. You must not just be a common vessel. There must not be death in your life. Like Esther, you must make up your mind to remain a virgin as an undefined. Esther obtained favor before the king. Because she has some attributes befitting of a vessel unto honor. He was contented with what she had. That was Esther. And no wonder we are studying her at a time like this. So that we can be like Esther that obtained favor before the king. So as Christians, 
We must live our life as vessels unto honor so that we can constantly obtain favor before God. We must serve him with all our heart. We must give all our all to him. Jesus said, as, we, as he is, so we are in this world. He has called us to be his ambassadors. Are you an ambassador of Christ? Or you are your own ambassador? Are you representing Christ in your place of work, in your community, in your church? Everywhere you go, can people look at you and say, yes, this must be a vessel unto honor. In Acts chapter 2, the disciples spoke in tongues, but they never called them Christ-like. Until when they saw their character, when they saw their disposition, and for the first time in Acts chapter 11, verse 26, Acts chapter 11, verse 26, they were called Christians in Antioch because they lived the life befitting of vessels unto honor. It is my prayer that the Almighty God will make us vessels unto honor in the name of Jesus. That at the end of the day, when Jesus shall come, he will tell us, come in to the place where I have prepared for you. So live your life to the fullest, to the glory of the Lord. Everything you do from today, start taking stock of your life. Every word you utter, everywhere you go, start asking yourself, is this my move pleasing to God? Is this my thought pleasing to God? Esther was that conscious. Before she appeared before the king, she was already prepared. She, was, she has already made up her mind to serve the king. So have you made up your mind to serve the king of kings? Have you made up your mind to serve the Lord of lords? I pray that the almighty God will grant us the grace, the ability to be vessels unto honor in every area of our life in the name of Jesus. Let's read 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 again. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Make up your mind that this day onward, I want to be a vessel unto honor. I want to serve God with all my life. I want God to use me to the fullest. Even my neighbors will know that indeed this must be a vessel unto honor because it's different from others. And the Lord will give us the grace in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us at a time like this at a time when the love of many is waxing cold, at a time where many people are drawing back. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that we must be a vessel unto honor. Lord, we ask, King of glory, that in every area we have been defied. Father, please have mercy upon us in the name of Jesus. Father, let your blood wash away all our sins in the name of Jesus. And from this day, O oh Lord, the grace, the power, the enablement to be a vessel unto honor, the grace to be vessels unto honor, Father, grant unto us in the name of Jesus. Let your name be glorified in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are strongly persuaded that we are really blessed by the message, and we pray that we will all be verses unto honor in the name of Jesus. We are the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Beautiful Gate, Lagos, Province 77. And our Tuesday digging day comes up by 6.30 p.m. every Tuesday, 
and every Wednesday by 6.15 a.m., we'll have our hour of mercy when we come together to pray as we go into the day. As you join in this program, Tuesday, 6.30 p.m., and Wednesday, 6.15 a.m., the Lord will richly bless you in Jesus' name. Let us give our offering. Let's give our offering. The, it will be displayed on your screen. And while it's being displayed, let us also not forget that on Sundays we have two services, and we are doing both the online and the physical gathering. Also on Sundays, we have two services. The first service commences by 8 a.m., why the second service commences by 10.30 a.m. Be free to attend any of them. And so our prayer that even as we attend, the Lord will richly bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your mercies. Thank you for how you have spoken to us. Thank you, King of glory, for indeed from this day on we shall be verses unto honor. Lord, we ask for the grace for we to keep burning, for the grace, for we to continue to be verses unto all, not to the last day, for that grant unto us in the name of Jesus. Help us not to be weary on the way, and everlasting Father, keep us from falling, present us faultless before your exceeding glory in the name of Jesus. Let it be well with us, all those that have joined in this broadcast, let it be well with them, and Lord, all those that we hear, bless them in Jesus' name. Let your word be fruitful in our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let somebody shout hallelujah.